Hey guys, so today I'm just doing the first part of the video, which is an in-depth dive into how exactly G-Sync, V-Sync, all that kind of stuff works. Um, I'm just going to go over pretty much just why you should use G-Sync, and here it goes. So, the in if you see my settings, I run... On plus boost here, and then in my NVIDIA control panel, I run I run G Sync on and V Sync on at the same time. And here's why. So when I here, let me uh, all tab out real quick here, and I'm gonna show you on my desktop here. So I'm gonna go to my NVIDIA control panel here and manage 3D settings here. So if you're not running, if you don't have a G-Sync monitor, the best thing to do is run no V-Sync. So make sure you turn vertical sync off here. And in Valorant, uncap your FPS. That's the best thing to do. You're going to get the least amount of input delay. And you might experience some screen tearing. But if you have a G-Sync monitor, there's a lot of hoaxes about like G-Sync input delay and it causes so much input delay, this and that. And all of those are not true. We can go to blurbusters.com here and we can actually see, I open a bunch of articles here. Just if you go to this website, you can see there's a bunch of different things of why G-Sync, the high benefit, like the benefits of G-Sync and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm going to start, the most important article to start with is here. So if we look here, this is G-Sync versus V-Sync off with FPS limits at 60 hertz. So at, at a 60 hertz monitor with G-Sync, if I'm running G-Sync and V-Sync with a frame limiter, I'm going to get an average between 30, around 39 milliseconds of input delay. But if I'm running V-Sync off, I'm getting around 20. So that's a significant difference at 60 hertz. But as we move up in hertz in monitors, we'll go to 144 for example, there's still a decent amount of input delay at 144. And that's why I said you should be running G-Sync with no V-Sync on um, 144. But when we start hitting the 240 hertz range, the input delay is next to nothing almost. And when you hit 360 hertz, it's going to be even smaller. And we can see here, it's literally maybe one, two milliseconds max, four, but most likely it's going to be between one to two milliseconds. And G-Sync is pretty, the problem is, is that like all these, all the CSGO old pros and all these old, like everything that's gone in the past, like, with running no G-Sync because G-Sync is just a new technology. No one's really like being introduced into what G-Sync is. And G-Sync has huge, huge benefits, which is the biggest benefit being no screen tearing whatsoever. So what I recommend, and again, going through these articles, I recommend, highly recommend if you want to go even deeper into this is going to blurbusters.com and going through all of these and you can lit you can literally see here that the input delay at 240 hertz again they haven't measured at 360 but it's going to be even less the input delay here v-sync off zero fps limits on cap frames versus g-sync v-sync in the nvidia plus a frame limiter is next to nothing so this is why i run g-sync with v-sync on because i have i don't want any screen tearing whatsoever if i uncap my frames i experience a ridiculous amount of screen tearing so i run g-sync v-sync on and then as for the frame limiter in um in valorant when you use let me see here i'm gonna go and open the game here When you turn on NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency here, this is going to automatically cap your frames if you're running G-Sync and V-Sync on at the same time. It's it's going to cap your frames at what will be the best for your monitor per se. So like, I have a 360 here monitor, It's and the Reflex is going to cap at 327, so I'm never, go, I'm never going above 327, which is going to cause the least amount of input lag, and it's going to cause no screen tearing whatsoever. 
how G Sync works is G Sync will always G Sync will only kick in if your monitor is under your sorry if your FPS is under your monitor's refresh rate. So if I have a 360 hertz monitor and I'm not passing 360 hertz, uh, sorry 360 FPS, I will never enter G, I will never enter V Sync range. I'll always stay within G Sync range. Once I pass 360 hertz, that is where V Sync kicks in. So a lot of people are like, oh no, V Sync is bad. V Sync, like you should never be running V Sync. Well, V Sync only kicks in when your FPS passes your monitor's refresh rate. So since my FPS is capped, as shown here, you should always cap your FPS, you'll never actually hit V Sync range. So you'll never actually experience that input delay. Your, what Reflex does is it's going to cap your frames automatically, so you don't actually have to cap your frames in-game. Reflex will automatically do that for you. So this is the best thing to run, in my personal opinion. If you want the least, least amount of input delay, that one, maybe one millisecond, two millisecond input delay, and you don't mind screen tearing whatsoever, then go for it. You can run... What people do is, with G-Sync monitors, a lot of people run the ULMB or even Fix Refresh, which are terrible. You shouldn't run either of those. You should keep G-Sync on, turn V-Sync off, and uncap your FPS. Because once, when your FPS is uncapped, and again, I'm going to stress this again. If your FPS is uncapped and it passes your monitor's refresh rate, G-Sync will not kick in. So the best thing to do is just leave G-Sync on, turn V-Sync off, and uncap your FPS. You're not, your G-Sync will not kick in, so there's no worries that G-Sync causes input delay because it's never kicking in as your frames are above your monitor's refresh rate, most likely. Especially in a game like Valorant or CS, you're always going to have those high frames. But if you can do that, if you have a high hertz monitor, and I, for me personally, again, I think the trade-off is well worth it. I recommend turning G-Sync on and V-Sync on and turning reflex on obviously to and reflex again will cap your frames if you're running vsync another thing make sure you're turning vsync off in game that's a big thing here so it says right here optimal gsync settings would be to run make sure you're in full screen mode turn vsync on and gsync in your nvidia control panel in game make sure you're on full screen disable vsync in game and set an in-game fps limiter but again reflex automatically does that for you so if you run if you put your reflex to on or on plus boost it will automatically cap your fps uh that's really it another thing here is uh we see that there's this low latency mode here if you don't have reflex available to you you should turn this on to ultra but most graphics cards have reflex available to them a reflex overrides this low latency mode so if you have if you're running on or on plus boost there's no point to running all running this on on or ultra it doesn't do anything so if and sometimes like the reason why i have it off is because sometimes people have said there can be some issues of them cross like crossing so if you have on or on plus boost leave this off if you don't have uh reflex available to you then turn this to ultra but most of you should have reflex available to you another thing you can do is if you hop into range in game you can access your game to run <coughs> sorry your game to render latency stats so here I'm going to show you here once this loads um when I hop in here and spawn in bots here, I'm gonna go to video stats. And when you have reflex available to you, you'll have these stats down here. So I'm gonna put these on here and these are my game to render latency stats in the top right corner. So we see that I have a game to render, render latency of around three milliseconds, game latency of around 2.5 to 2.6 and render latency of around 0 0.4 per se. So what, I'm going to do now this is with again this is with me running g-sync that's why my frames and v-sync that's why my frames are capped at 327 as you can see i'm not going to ever enter v-sync range and i'm running g-sync with no screen tearing whatsoever the game feels great but so let's compare these stats right 
So let's take these stats here and let's compare them if I were to run the game without with vsync off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my NVIDIA control panel. I'm going to go and I'm going to keep G-Sync on. I'm going to turn vsync off. Apply this here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Valorant. Bear with me one sec while I log in. So I've now I've now turned VSync off. And I get an error code. Nice. Nice, nice. <laughs> way to way to go, Valorant. Uh, I will not be cutting this out because I do not like I don't even have video editing software and I use Fiverr. I outsource Fiverr to uh, edit my montages, so you can just skip ahead a bit, and I apologize. I am lazy. Alright, so hopefully this is up and going here. I'm going to go into the range again. And I am going to open chat. Okay, so here we go. You can see it's lower, obviously, right now, but that's because I haven't spawned any bots in. So this is me running the game here with vsync off. And as you can see, we're getting around 2.8. My game to render latency 2.9 and it's literally the same stats with vsync off and now our frames are uncapped but when i go when i actually turn um when i view on my screen is a ton of screen tearing when i'm running it the screen is tearing constantly it's terrible it's so blurry and the game doesn't feel smooth at all when i'm running around looking like this so it doesn't change your render latency stats whatsoever running gsync plus vsync again on plus boost and our frames are uncapped and as you can see I'm getting 600 frames so I'm not actually entering G-Sync range because my frames are well above my monitor's refresh rate which is 360 Hertz so I'm not entering G-Sync range therefore I'm not getting that G-Sync input delay well not really any G-Sync input delay but I'm not experiencing that input delay whatsoever and my render latency stats are literally the same so Again, I very I stress that you try running G Sync plus V Sync and just just trying it out just to see what it's like to get no screen tearing, especially if you have a G Sync monitor. G Sync has so many benefits that and just people are just way too afraid to actually use G Sync and V Sync because they're so afraid of input delay, but it's just it's just because all the old pros, G-Sync is such a, it's not even a new tech, it's not even that new. It's been out for a while now. It's just people have never tried to transition over and actually try it. So give it a try and you can see like it has so many benefits and the game feels so much smoother. And I just, yeah, that's all I can say is just I highly, highly recommend running G-Sync and V-Sync on if you have a 240 hertz monitor or a 360 hertz monitor. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below, but I hopefully covered everything that, like everything in this video, but again, blurbusters.com, shout out to Chief Blurbuster. You can follow him on Twitter as well, right here, Chief Blurbuster. Guy's amazing, helped me out a lot and answered a lot of my questions. Thanks so much for watching.